What's up guys? Welcome to another fine episode of FIY Garage. Today we're going to be looking at this thing. This is a 1986 Honda TRX70. It's pretty much the smallest quad they made to my knowledge. This thing's, yeah, 33 years old. And I bought it about a year and a half ago. When we go out to the desert, a bunch of my buddies got little ATC three-wheelers and Yamaha three-wheelers and little baby quads and they just like to run, tear around camp on them. So it looked really fun. So I went ahead and picked this thing up for, I don't know, a hundred bucks or something. It was in really bad shape. Hasn't run. I did a little work on it. I took the rear wheels off and painted them and put different tires because the other tires were bad. But other than that, I mean, it's in pretty rough shape. I mean, there's no, uh, there's no alternate brake lever. The frame has rust on it. You know, the, uh, this, actually, this was my fault. I actually ended up cutting this off because it was bent down and hitting the wheel. But yeah, I mean, this thing just, yeah, it's obviously seen better days. It's gonna be a cool little project. You know, I mean, they're not that expensive to work on. We need a, a full engine for this thing, like a really, really big CC one, brand new, whole complete is can be you know, three, four hundred bucks or something, but I'm not gonna really go that far into this thing, I don't think. We'll see, but gonna try to address it today. I'd like to get it running. I um I you know picked up some parts for it. I picked up a couple handlebar grips. You know, when I first got it, thinking I'd have time to work on it, but I didn't. Then I got some new fuel hose, some filters, there's half of the original carburetor and uh, here's the original pull start and the pull start was in various pieces which is why it one of the reasons why it could not start it so you can see right here the um, you can see that this is where the pull start used to go there's not even a spark plug in this thing so I don't know. I don't know if it's going to run. I have no clue. So the uh, I did check the gas up in the tank and it smell it's stinky. It smells like varnish. So we're going to figure out a way to get that out. So I think first order of business will be to drain the gas. So I'm going to have to figure out which of these little lines here is uh, the fuel in the reserve. I'm not 100% sure. So I might be able to tell by looking either way. Um, I'm gonna do them one at a time and see what happens. I'm gonna get a little fuel container and I'll be back because I cracked it and a little, little bit of gas came out and it's disgusting. This whole garage reeks like it and it's a smell that never really goes away, but I kind of like it, but it's a little overpowering. So let me get a container. All right, now one of these fuel lines is for the main and one of them's reserve. Reserve is basically a section of the tank where if the main one runs out, it leaves you enough to more or less get back to camp, get back to where you came from. It um, Supposedly, it'll run. I've never actually ran one on reserve. I mean, my buddies have before, but I'm not exactly sure how much it is versus the total volume of the tank. But it's supposed to be enough to get you back where you need to go. But um, I guess the bike will just stop, and then you have to switch it over to reserve, and it's kind of a warning. Say, hey, we don't have enough, whole lot of fuel left. But anyway... Um, I'm gonna pull these off one at a time because I don't know what's what. Unfortunately, fuel is probably gonna spill all over. So I'm gonna do these one at a time so I don't mix it up, but. Oh, crap. All right, well, let's cover this. You can see this gas is quite yellow. So it's not the best looking by any means. You, me. Okay, well that one's uh, that one's empty. So, take that put it out of the way and then I think this will be the reserve. And it's showing that it's empty too. So, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back. Actually gonna look into the tank and there's still quite a bit of fuel on the other side so let me get this plastic out of the way yeah this tanks kind of set up like a horseshoe so there is quite a bit of fuel in the other side so what I'm gonna do 
is go get my uh, go get my little uh, vacuum pump thing I just got, and we'll see how it works. All right. Well, I got this thing a little while back on Amazon, and never used it. It's supposed to be a fluid remover, so we'll see. I know they have like really nice ones for taking oil out and stuff, but this is just a cheapo little one. So we'll see what it does. Never used it. So what I think you're supposed to do, this should be the, the pump. Screw it on here. And then one of these should be, I can assume it's this end. Get shoved down into there. Then what I'm thinking it's going to do is, when I use the, when I pump the vacuum, it's going to basically put this into a vacuum and suck through this. So my first time using it, it was like I don't know, 12 bucks or something. So might come in handy to get this nasty gas out. I'm not sure. The tube's pretty, <laughs> pretty rigid, so it might help. It might not. Let's see what it does. Oh. Wow. That's pretty cool. That worked pretty good. I mean, there wasn't much left in there, but I mean, you can see gas isn't supposed to be that color. So we'll go ahead and set this aside. And come back over here. Put the cap on this. Yeah, this gas is nasty. You can see there's water in it, chilling in the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see right here, the carburetor's missing. We took it off, so. I'm not sure what this little plate is right here, but we have this gasket, which doesn't look like it's very good. I'm gonna get the new carburetor. Actually, let's look in the old carburetor. See what's in here. Nope, nothing really useful. So take new carburetor out and it looks pretty simple. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm I'm supposed to use this or what? I think it's a little fiber, little fiber block to stop heat from going into the carburetor and vapor locking it. But um, looks like it's seen better days. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top off this new carburetor and try to change the throttle cable over to the new carburetor. I've never done this on one of these before, so bear with me take a guess on what I need to do so pull this boot back as far as it'll go and then you see there's the needle right here and there's a spring so that's what's supposed to happen when you accelerate what I think I'm gonna do is pull the spring back Oh, just like that. All right, well. Let's take that off. Let's see what's under here. Okay, it's the whole thing. So I'm just gonna unscrew this cable off of this. Wow. Fish it out. Yeah, I can, I'm gonna leave the boot. No sense in changing that. I'm gonna take this brass ferrule off. So let's take, oops, oops, come back here. So, let's take this through here.
Oh, guess that one's not threaded. And that goes there, so let me get the needle out of this thing. Oh, come on. Let me go get a little screwdriver, I'll be back. Okay. So we're gonna take a little tiny hole there, so see if I can push up on that. Get this needle out. And see if we can get it on here. The new spring. Wait, that's the new spring. This is the new spring. Thank you. Maybe. Try to compress it down as much as I can. Feral, it's kind of hard to keep track of. You know, if you get a pair of needle nose, it'll probably help. Just don't want to be too aggressive with it and break it. Okay, got that. And where'd my little spring go? That's the original one. All right. Oh, right there. I think I didn't roll over it. Man. Not as easy as I would have thought. Spring back. That should be it. Let's see. The little groove that it rides up and down in. Screw the top on. Should be like that. Nope. Don't want to lose that. Well, it opens. Now let's put the little boot back on. Okay. Go back to the other side. Okay, now what I'm gonna do since these paper gaskets on here are pretty much done, I'm gonna put this side with the plastic, can use the little O-ring that came off the carburetor. But the other side, right here has a paper gasket. I don't have one, so I'm gonna use this. This is called RTV. It stands for Room Temperature Vulcanizing. It's basically silicone sealer that gets hard at room temperature so you don't have to have a special baking process or something for it to do its thing but a little of this should seal it up and they have different colors they have blue for water pumps and gray and 
orange for high temp and everything, but this is just standard black. It'll come out. This is an old tube, so bear with me. Nope, I'm gonna go get a different one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use gray on this. It's not too, too critical about what color you use. Certain ones work for different applications. The orange is for high heat, and blues, like I said, for water pumps. Gray, you can kind of use anywhere. Um, let's make sure I don't get it in the middle. This stuff's really good. It helps you, uh, it helps create a seal, because on something like this, where you have all these tiny little, you have a tiny little carburetor that's metering a certain amount of air, if you had an air leak, it could be real major on this thing because, like I said, the hole to let the air in, you could plug with your thumb. So, um, let's see what size this is. It's probably a 10. It is a 10. So, let's get the deep 10, get the little carburetor, and let's put it on. I am going to get the little O-ring right here. Bring this little thing through here. Overflow straw, stick the o ring here, and then try to fish this guy in. But I can't drop the o ring. If I do, it doesn't seal, the engine won't run. So, start this one, get the other one started. Let's see if it'll go. Yes, it looks like it is. Oh. Crap, I have the little, uh, little plastic thing upside down, I think, it kind of looks like it, let's see. upside down. Let's put it back the right way. Okay. That's good. Now if this o-ring keeps being a pain in the butt, I can put a little drop of a electric grease on it, or a dab, I'm sorry, and it'll hold it in place, which it looks like it's going to probably try to do. So, let's see if I can do it without it. first time threading in it's a brand new carburetor so the casting's a little rough make sure to get the other side too like I said I'll know this isn't right because it either won't run or it'll run like crap okay that side's on I'm gonna go get the little 10 mil wrench. All right. Like I've told you in the other videos, ratcheting end wrenches are awesome. That's what this is. So you can hold it still and the end will actually ratchet so that you can get in the little tight spots. And then this holds the head so it doesn't bend, but these are old ratchets and that's worn out. So bring it over here, make sure it goes the other way. And find the nut. Oh, that one 
doesn't have enough room for the end, so I'm gonna have to do it manually. Let's come over to the other side. <clears throat> I'm gonna go get a standard one. All right, now. Okay, nice and tight. So, we did that. And we'll check this one one more time. Tight. All right, now, since this is what's left over from the other carburetor, it went originally went like that. I think, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move these onto the new carburetor one at a time. So the one towards the front is to the top. Okay. And the one towards the back. They're acting like they're a little too long. Don't like the fact that it's sitting on the cylinder head. Um. You know, let me go get the cutters and cut that. The reason I want to cut it is this cylinder head gets pretty hot, so I really don't want the fuel filters sitting on top of the cylinder head. Oh, this line has gotten quite crispy. Let me get it out. Come on. Sometimes you gotta cut the hose a little too. Wow, okay. Well, not gonna leave me much to work with, but. That's gonna be fun. Getting that guy bigger to get this in there, cause even though I changed this fuel line last year, it's all old. See if I have some more. I don't know if this will go on. Let me uh let me figure out this fuel. I'm gonna snug that up too, the bottom of the fuel tank. Alright, so that's on. So let's put away the RTV. And now we have to figure out if the engine has oil. So what we'll do. Come over here, check it. It should. Oh, okay. Wow. Nice and clean. Okay. So it's got oil. Now since this thing hasn't been run, in a long, long time. What we'll do is, here's where the spark plug goes. Now an engine needs a few different things to run and compression is what helps. Basically compression is needed to light it off. So if there's no, uh, there's no compression, if the piston isn't coming up and compressing the mixture, the thing's not gonna run. So what you can do is put your finger over the hole where the spark plug is and you can hear it. You can hear it trying to suck air through the carburetor and blow my finger off. Okay, so it's a good start that it has compression. Yeah, oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do is, this thing hasn't been running, I have no idea how long, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squirt a little bit of a WD-40 in there so that it doesn't start dry. Let me go get it. All right, so spray a little WD-40 in there. Then rotate the engine. All right, at least it's rotating freely. Now what I'm gonna do is take a wire brush, a basic steel brush with, a plastic brush in this case with a bunch of steel bristles to clean stuff. So I'm gonna take it and get the little spark plug right here, and it has black stuff all over the end, carbon, so cleaned it up a little bit. 
never hurts. Wire brush won't affect the gap. So, cleaned it off a little. And what I'm gonna do is find the proper sockets, probably the 16. Yep, and go ahead and put the spark plug in. Actually, you know what? We'll test the ignition system to make sure it works. So, this thing has a basically a magneto. It's a self-generating ignition. So, this little stator in there generates electricity and creates a spark. So, in order for it to do it, we have to spin it fast enough. So, I'm gonna get my drill and chuck a socket onto the pull start and we'll see if we can get spark. Okay, so, if you look at the pull start, you pull it that way, so the motor rotates counterclockwise. So, I'm gonna take this, flip it to counterclockwise. We'll put it on here. This is gonna simulate cranking the engine. So, the stator is gonna spin around and create electricity to make a spark. So, if it works, we'll see it. And it doesn't look like it is. Come on, don't tell me I need an ignition. Oh, you know what? Let's turn the key on and make sure it's on run. Ah, there it is, you can see the little spark. It's working. That's awesome. I had no idea if that was gonna work or not. I mean, this thing sat on the side of someone's house for quite a while. I think they said like five or six years just chilling out in the element, so who knows? Put the spark plug in, tighten her up. Okay, now I need a decent way of starting it. Besides this, this is cool, but you can't carry that around with you all the time. So what we're gonna do is look at this pull start. Now, this came with its own adapter kit. Not sure if I'm gonna need it or not. I might, so we'll have to see. These are the new fingers that it's gonna grab, and it looks like it's gonna be different than the original, so we're gonna have to change these. Let me get my tools. So, the little impact seems to work okay, because what would happen if I just put a wrench or a socket on here, all it's gonna do is spin, so. This stuff actually came from ATC70.com and they're one of the few places that still stocks this kind of stuff, but there's a big resurgence in these things. People like them, they remember enjoying them as a kid, so they're enjoying them as adults. Let me turn the key off. So, I think that's pretty cool. I didn't get into dirt bikes and quads and stuff until I was significantly older, but still feel like a giant kid playing with this stuff so you know if you're a beginner getting something like this would actually be a really really good project because they're quite simple versus a car engine or something so well I have to rotate that around a little bit it looks like it's keyed so that looks better rotate it and find a spot where all the holes are exposed I guess right. Yeah, I'm probably gonna at some point replace all these plastics because these are original. I mean, this looks like crap. Someone painted it at one point, but like I said, it sat on the side of someone's house. So, just like a tire, tighten these in a star pattern. Okay. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna need the adapter or not. I might. Let's see. 
Where does this go? I think it just does that. So I'll take these out. I think I'm gonna need it, unfortunately. So let's take one of these Allens out so we can find out which size it is. And then they gave me these three nifty screws. So I assume those go there. So let's see. These are these are what's called countersunk, so they're kind of self-centering. Well, they actually are, but because what will happen is as you turn it in, the screw will center itself. So there you go. Let's get this in. And get this last one bolted in. Is that, this is a really nice little kit. This is pretty cool because Honda quit making the original starter or the original um, pull starter a while back. So lucky that somebody took the time to go ahead and uh, make this. All right, so I'm gonna go find the correct Allen for these screws. All right, well, let's get this pull starter on. One, two, and three. Nice, everything lines up perfectly. This is excellent. I was so stressed out about finding the pull starter until I ran across this website. I got the carburetor from them too. Let's see if uh, see if it'll actually crank. Oh yeah, sweet. All right, well, grease the throttle cable a little bit, and next order of business should be add some fuel. So, put this little overflow hose in its hole. And let's turn the fuel off. All right, off. Now I have this little air filter that came with the old carburetor. So I'm gonna see if this will fit. It should, maybe. Sweet, yeah it does, that's awesome. This little quad's cool. I didn't think that would. So, this is gonna take a while. So I'll fast forward it. Okay, and I need to, need to turn that at some point or something because it's just gonna chafe on that piece of metal right there. Anyway, um, looks like it's time to put some gas in it. Unfortunately, this is lawnmower gas, so don't know how good it's gonna be. Put a little bit in here. Just a little, see what she does. Still in neutral. Let's put it on fuel on. Huh? It needs more gas. Actually, no, I'll run it off reserve. There should be enough in there. Yeah, it should be more than enough. Let's put the cover back on. Come on, you got this thing. Come on, little quad. Let's pump it a couple times. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs>
probably crack the garage door. Well, little quads running. Really don't like how much oil it's burning, but I mean, kind of is what it is. I mean, the thing's from 1987, so I might uh might go through the motor at some point. I mean, it's funny to say go through the motor because it's literally one piston, but um, yeah, I mean, it's running. I'm gonna let it warm up and uh, we'll see where we're at. I'm not gonna bore you with me cleaning up, so I'll be back with you. All right, well, uh, <laughs> it is smoking a lot. Uh-oh. Damn, son. It's quite windy. All right, well. Synopsis. Is it running? Yes. Is it running well? Yes. Is it smoking more than a blue hair on a heater at the penny slots? Absolutely, but it is running. So, can I have fun on it? Absolutely. It looks, I need to replace this. This looks like crap. But, hey, a little bit at a time. So, luckily there are a couple companies that make these plastics what I've been told I can find them so let's see oh man let's see if the brakes work that's the scary part I haven't even tried that yes they do kind of yep they do let's see Well, this is quite sharp right here, so I'm gonna re probably replace these handlebars anyway. And let's see. <laughs> this thing is not made for somebody my size. Hey, it goes. And the tires are flat, but it goes. Uh-oh. It's all that matters. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, just a FYI, I tried to take the spark arrestor out to clean it, and the bolts broke, so yeah. bit better but anyway like I'm super stoked about this thing so there's gonna be a lot more videos on it to come all right guys have a good night